You Booked It, Episode 45. Hey, entertainers and performers of the world. I'm your host, Dane Reese, and welcome to You Booked It, where I chat with inspiring entertainers seven days a week. By digging into their journey, we're going to discover everything you need to do to be a successful entertainer. You know, because... Training usually skips that part about how to actually make your skills work for you in the real world. Fellow entertainers, my drive here at You Booked It is to share the inspiring and incredible journeys of successful entertainers. We are here to support your journey. So go to youbookeditpodcast.com and join the You Booked It email community where we dig deep into truly actionable things you can be doing right now to help you book that next audition, submission, or gig. If you enjoy this free podcast, please show your support and search for You Booked It on Apple Podcast or your favorite podcast app where you can subscribe so you don't miss an episode, leave a rating, and review. And to show our appreciation for your, fingers crossed, five-star rating and review, I will give you a shout-out on an upcoming episode. And now, let's do this. Okay, let's get started. I am excited to introduce my guest today, Norman Johnson Jr. Are you ready for this, Norman? I am. Right on. Acknowledged by Deadline, IndieWire, and Variety Magazines as best lead in short film game, Norman is hailed as one of the most exciting and talented upcoming actors. As a seasoned film industry veteran, only 28 years young, he continues to break through. In 2018, he filmed three short films and his first leading role in the feature, The Last Summer, now on Netflix. Norman, that is a quick intro of who you are and what you've done, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, fill in the gaps, if you will, who you are, where you're from, where you're currently calling home, and a little bit more about what you do as a professional in the entertainment industry. Well, <laughs> that's, that's a great summary. I think a, a good follow-up is I'm a kid that's been around the industry for since you know I could remember. Uh, my father is a actor, comedian. He's kind of gave us the chops. So me and my brothers, uh, we grew up in a, in a very lustful family, very creative. We, we kind of consider ourselves like the Wayans brothers. <laughs> so we grew up about an hour out of Los Angeles, um, maybe towards Riverside, more towards Moreno Valley. And uh, like I said, we're a big creative family. So there's more where I came from. <laughs> ah, Fantastic. Yeah. Well, let's move on to this section here. And look, Norman, I am a sucker for a good quote. What's your favorite quote you'd like to share with everyone? I think the my favorite quote, one of my favorite quotes I go by these days would be from one of my friends, Biggs. He says, my words will either attract a strong mind or offend a weak one. And I think that's that's valuable these days because you're not going to everyone's not going to like what you have to say. And I think once you stick to what you really honestly feel, that's all that matters. Absolutely. And how have you applied that quote to your daily life and your career? I apply it on a daily basis. Um, I tend to not rub people the wrong way, but I also tend to not sugarcoat things. And I think being in the industry, that goes a, a long way, you know, having the contrast of being on the west coast and then going to the east coast totally two different vibes but to blend the boat to the two has always been the uh i guess the uh the bridge for me yeah absolutely and let's move on to this next section here so norman of course you are an entertainer i am an entertainer and i think you'd agree that this industry can be one of the most subjective, brutally honest, personally emotional (laughs) industries either of us have probably ever experienced. And you know as well as I that to create and to have a successful career in this industry like you're having now takes a lot of dedication and hard work. And while, yeah, there is an outrageous amount of fun and excitement being an entertainer, being on set, there are also our fair share of obstacles, challenges, and failures we are going to have to experience and move through if we want to continue doing this. So tell us, what is one 
key challenge, obstacle, or failure you've experienced in your career, and how did you come out the other side better because of it? Um, well, like so many things are just flashed through my head. <laughs> as like I said, as I've yeah. been in the, in the industry since I've been a young kid to see how it's changed so much from when I was 10 years old to now, it's just, it's, it's amazing. So I think the adversity I've went through as the, you know, a person of color, um, someone that, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve, my hair accentuates the way that I look and the way I talk, everything is more so in the, uh, I guess, contemporary urban type um, stature or genre of a character. So for me, I think it's always been about breaking the code, breaking the, the narrative. Mm. And I've been able to do that with, with, with great roles and great uh, characters I've been able to embed in. But I'm also, it, it's, it was hard to, it's not easy. And I, I, like I'd say, I, it, I'm blessed to be able to do so in a great fashion. Um, you know, I've, I've done roles where I'm the guitarist, I'm the skateboarder, and this is not what you really see as for someone like myself. So I take pride in that, but I think, some of the things that a lot of people don't get to see on the outside looking in is, you know, the tip of the iceberg uh, painting is there's so much work that have, you know, to be a professional, you have to literally hone in and, and do this a day. This is a day to day thing. And I think a lot of people don't get to see that part of it. So Absolutely. I, I think, yeah, I think most parts, it's not, you know, seeing the, 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 the work ethic that goes into getting these roles and these gigs. I think that's the biggest adversity for someone like myself. Absolutely. And I think it's it's so easy, especially when you go to the film and TV world, because your the end product is so easily accessible through different streaming services and things like this, that it right. I think even more so than live theater, it is easy for people to go, oh, they're just in movies. It's easy. It's so simple. Right. But all that work, oh my gosh. Right. You can't even imagine the days, the years of grinding it out, honing your skills, failing at those auditions or those, you know, botching up a side that happens. Right. You know? and, right. The compromise is always, is always there as an artist. And it, I think the, uh, the key is to not lose your mental and I guess yourself in the journey because it's, it's easy in doing so. <laughs> Absolutely. And sticking to be yourself. Right. It's all worth that then. And I would say so for myself. Brilliant. Well, let's move on to this next section now to a time that I like to call your spotlight moment, that one moment in time you realized, yes, I am going to be an entertainer for a living. Or maybe it was, yes, this is what I need to be doing as an entertainer. Tell us about that. Man, <laughs> I remember this just like yesterday. It was, it was an amazing time. Uh, I would say it was after, after I got one of my first lead roles. Um, like I said, I was doing a lot of theater when I was young, doing a lot of work uh, besides the film aspect. So me coming back after when I went to college, me coming back into the film industry was more so my debut. So when I got my first lead role in the last summer, I think after when, you know, I, as I developed the relationships I had, the type of rapport that I had that kind of created the energy that I always was in search of. And I think that was the spotlight moment when I was on the carpet, red carpet on the premiere day and just seeing me really uh, enjoy the labor that I've put in over the, over the years, over the decades. Absolutely. And you, I can imagine you realize you're like, man, I have arrived. This is what I am meant to be doing with my life. Right. Totally. All right, and let's piggyback on that question and let's talk about your number one booked it moment. Walk us through that day, the auditions, the callbacks, if they happen to be a part of it, what was going on in your life and what about that moment makes it your favorite booked it moment? Definitely remember this vividly. Uh, right after I was like the post high of my first lead film, I came back home. And as everything is different now, you don't have to necessarily be in person. So the power of me sending this cell tape in, I remember clear as day, I knew for a fact that I booked this role. And not only was it the energy and the chemistry that me and my brother had when we were filming, but I can just tell that this role was meant for me. And, you know, as a when you find your groove as an artist, there's kind of no, you, you could hardly miss even with the things that's unintentional and that's kind of where it was so it was so unintentional but so perfect and perfect timing so 
as you said, I, I definitely arrived. <laughs> so I just kept afloat. Yeah, I love that. And there's so many times and people that I'm speaking with that they have those that experience, almost like mm-hmm. this weird out of body kind of experience where they know they know they nailed it. Right. It's like a it's like a certain type of synergy with the universe. And um I mean, well, it's just now coming out. The 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 production is called Paradise City. It's one one of my favorite, uh, one of my best friends, one of the late Cameron boys, and um, I, I'm I'm so excited for the world to see it. We put a lot of uh, a lot into it, so much into the the, the screenplay, with the, even just the the gist of the whole world that we created. So I'm very excited for it, and um, it's been a long time coming. Brilliant. Well, let's take a moment now to talk about the present. What projects are you working on? What are you looking forward to? And of course, we are amidst this crazy global pandemic. There is an outrageous amount of social and racial injustices happening. How do you see the entertainment industry moving forward in the next couple of years? I think at this time, I've been doing a lot of, in my head, uh, dialing in and figuring out where it is that I specifically want to see myself ex- excel. I've done so many things. I've kind of hit the goal marks for myself as that young hmm. kid. So now it's more of maturing and seeing where I can get in on the backside of helping others like myself. Um, just like you said, these times are different. So you, you don't obviously have to be in the mix to kind of still make the moves that you need to make. So I've been writing a lot of short films. I've been doing a lot of uh, screenplays myself and I'm looking forward to creating my own production company in the near future. So to help like-minded kids like myself and kind of give that opportunity. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, let's move on to one of my favorite sections in the interview. I call it the Grease Lightning Round. I'm going to ask you a yes. handful of questions, and I want you to answer them as quickly and concisely as possible, one after another. Are you ready? I am. Let's do it. Let's do it. First question. What was the one thing holding you back from committing to a career as an entertainer? Women. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you elaborate on that a bit? Women, I am a sucker for love. So anybody, any woman that tells them that tells me that they love me, I it's just like all else goes out the window. I'm like the uh, the 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 guy off of Looney Tunes. <laughs> so bad. <that's it. laughs> <laughs> love it. Well, second question: What is the best piece of advice you have ever received? Mm, the best piece of advice I've received is uh, from my friend Cameron Boyce the late, great youngin, he says that we do not rush to failure. We dance to success. And that's stuck with me ever since. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And the third question, what is something that is working for you right now? Or if you'd like to go pre-COVID, what was working for you before our industry went on pause? I believe what's working for me right now is the, the, the ability to be able to create this, your own space and to present that to the producers. And I say that because I, I love being in the room, but I also love being able to, because I'm, I'm an editor, I'm a filmmaker, so I love to be able to put that spin on my cell tapes, and usually I get some great feedback. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to that in the future. Yeah, beautiful. And the fourth question, what is the best resource, whether that's a book, a movie, a YouTube video, a podcast, maybe a piece of technology that you found is helping your career right now? Um, I am a very big guy on reading, although I should read more than I do. I have a, a ton of uh, books in my, my collection. I think Deepak has been very vital to my journey at this point. And, um, there's a, there's a handful of, of books I can refer to, but Deepak Chopper is like, <laughs> if, my, if my life had a title of my chapter, it would be Deepak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got amazing insight on so many things and the whole body-mind connection. It's fantastic. Yes, yes. And the fifth question, if you had to start your career from scratch, but still had all the knowledge and experience you've collected from your career in this industry, what would you do or not do? Would you do anything differently or would you keep it the same? Honestly, I don't regret anything in my career. I believe everything was designed and destined for myself. There is a couple of roles I 
declined when I was in a younger state. And I think it was around the representation is the reason why I didn't agree to these roles. But um, a couple of roles that became big success stories. Um, morally, I think I couldn't commit to it, but I think the passion I have with my career and with what I do, I would have definitely um, second second guessed myself. Right. And the last question. What is the golden nugget knowledge drop you've learned from your successful career in this industry you'd like to leave with everyone? I would like to leave everyone when, uh, with, when you make your, your debut or when you get your foot in the door, make sure you always keep it open for the next to show up. Because that's exactly how great communities are, are, are built in the industry. That's exactly how great friendships and great rapport is, is built on trust. So I believe I'm a very big advocate on um, helping and lending others to get to where I'm going. So um, that's, that's something I would lend a fellow artist. Absolutely. I think that is incredible advice for anybody listening. And to wrap up this interview, it is time to give yourself a plug. Where can we find you? How do our listeners connect with you? Is there anything you want to promote? You can find me on social media at Norman Johnson Jr. I have some great content on there. A lot of <laughs> great things. I am running my business, Nothing Normal. And that's where you can find the upcoming short films and features that I will be producing myself. And I have a couple of post-productions on the way. Uh, Paradise City is the next up it's going to be releasing very very soon we're looking for a home to land hopefully praying for a streaming service so everyone can get on you know get on board with it but it's a great yeah. storyline and i'm excited for it i think the uh, the audience is gonna gonna love it fantastic norman thank you so much for joining me today it has been a treat to have you i appreciate the the platform and i am uh, sending my blessings to you Dane, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us today. My one call to action for you is to go to youbookedpodcast.com and join our free email community, where we dig deep into a continually growing resource of truly actionable things you can be doing right now to help you advance your entertainment career. Don't miss an episode. We have a new guest seven days a week. Search for You Booked It on Apple Podcast or your favorite podcast app and subscribe today. All the best to you. We'll see you tomorrow.